Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Have you ever wondered why snakes shed their skin? Or why lizards lose their tails? Well, it's definitely not because they needed something new to wear or got tired of their own body. These are, in fact, examples of animal adaptations. When you hear the word adaptation, you can think of the word change. And today, I'll show you how some animals change the way they look. Imagine you live in the desert and it's summertime. And in the bright hot desert sun, you find something that looks like this. Wondering what that is? It's a snake skin. And if you're wondering why the skin is here and the snake is somewhere else, well, let me explain. When new healthy skin is created, a snake's old skin is thrown away so it starts slowly peeling back or shedding. And snakes have to shed their skin because their skin does not grow with them. Think about your skin. Do we have to shed it every few weeks when we're babies because we're getting bigger? Well, no, of course not. Our skin grows with us. But a snake's does not. It's kind of like buying new clothes. We grow out of our clothes because they don't grow with us. Well, a snake's skin is similar. But how it happens is even more cool than why. Just before a snake sheds, a snake's skin starts to look flaky and white. A snake's eyes are under its skin, and because their skin gets white when they shed, it becomes hard to see through. In fact, it's so hard to see through that snakes may not be able to see at all. But within a couple of days, the snake takes its head and rubs it on something hard like a rock. Well, the reason they do this is to start tearing away at their old skin, to open the outer layer. Cool, but gross. It works and works and rubs its head along that rock until the skin begins to tear. And once the tear is big enough, then the snake will start crawling through tight spaces to help them slide out of their skin. And they leave the old skin inside out like, you know how you take off your socks? And this whole skin shedding takes anywhere from a couple of days all the way to a couple of weeks, depending on how big the snake is. It's really important that a snake remains undisturbed during this process. Otherwise, the story may not have such a happy ending. Snakes have eye caps instead of eyelids. So if those thin layers of skin don't shed properly, the snake could be blind for the rest of their life. And the remaining skin could also have parasites or gross little bugs. In other words, the snake would probably get a disease or become sick. Now, if the snake is unable to remove the skin, it could mean that the snake is not getting proper blood flow. And this means that some part of the snake's body will not be able to function. And if a snake's body couldn't function, well, then they might die. Wow. Although it's a little strange, it's also super cool that the whole body of the snake works together to keep it alive. And huge animals, like sharks, have adaptations as well. Think about what a shark looks like. Now when a shark needs to eat, he has plenty of teeth to eat with. Many people think that sharks regrow teeth when they lose them. Like we regrow an adult tooth when we lose a baby tooth. But that's not exactly the case. Sharks have multiple rows of teeth in their mouth that are constantly regrowing. Not just one at a time like we do. Instead, when a shark loses a tooth on the outside row of its mouth, the tooth right behind it will move forward to fill in the hole where the tooth used to be. It works kind of like a conveyor belt. And the soft surrounding material in the shark's mouth, uh, called tissue, carries the tooth forward to make sure the shark has all the teeth possible to catch and eat its prey. Wow, that's pretty handy. Or toothy, I guess. There are so many incredible adaptations we could learn about. We also have animals like the lizard. In tropical environments, lizards are quite common, and you can see them walking through the grass or scurrying up a wall. Now, lizards have backbones that run well, down their back. And this backbone also runs all the way down their tails. And lizards have several weak spots in their tails along their backbones. 
where their tails can actually detach. This means when a lizard loses its tail, most likely while defending itself, the tail becomes detached from the body and can move around on the ground by itself. There are little things called nerves within the lizard's body that are still firing and communicating with each other. In fact, sometimes the tail will continue to move, wiggle, and flop around for up to half an hour by itself. It kind of looks like a worm. And that actually distracts the lizard's predator and gives the lizard plenty of time to escape. And that's not even all. After a lizard's tail falls off, it will even grow back. But it won't be exactly as it was the first time it was on the lizard. Instead, this time, the tail will be made out of cartilage. And that means it won't have any bone in it. The cartilage, that's the same stuff that your nose and your ears are made of. And it can take a really long time for cartilage to form. A small tail, maybe only four inches long, could take up to two months to grow back. And longer tails, like on the iguana, could take years to fully grow back. And most lizards can regrow tails multiple times throughout the course of their life before they can't regrow tails anymore. Wow, these adaptations are so cool. A little bit gross, but definitely cool. Without adaptations, lizards wouldn't be able to get away from things trying to harm them. And snakes wouldn't be able to get rid of old skin. And that's really important. I know that there must be plenty of other cool animals out there with awesome physical adaptations, just like the snake and the lizard. I wonder what they could be. Well, come along with me to the next video, and we'll find out.